Sarah Jane Moon sees painting as fundamentally the relationship between the artist's senses and the subject's presence. She talks to us about her portraits. What is it specifically about portraiture that attracts you? Um, I think <clears throat> I mostly am interested in portraiture because I think life is uh, really about people and the connections that we have uh, with other people in life. Um, and I, I, I love the idea of kind of exploring somebody's identity, who they are, how they present themselves in the world, um, and how their physical appearance references that. Um, and I find that quite a rich territory for um, exploration, really, through paint. So is it the physical likeness that you're trying to capture, or is there something more than that that you're trying to bring out? I definitely think of physical likeness for me, um, not for all painters, but for me certainly it's important to get some sort of likeness, um, if possible. And then I, d I do like um, there to be an aspect of uh, something, something beyond that as well, something about the person, about my relationship to the person, about who I think they are, about who they think they are, um, and ideally also um, about what they do. I often like to incorporate lots of uh, objects in my paintings, um, and I like to set uh, portraits in environments that are particular to the sitter. Uh, so it tells a bit of a story, a bit of a narrative about who they are in the world. So this is uh, a painting of a friend of mine called Stav B who's a fabulous entrepreneur and socialite uh, and uh, hosts all sorts of wonderful cocktail evenings and, and runs a bar. Um, and I, I, I love the way that she presents herself. She's always fabulously theatrical and wears these amazing outfits. And that, to me, really appealed. She's, she's kind of a, a brilliant um, person to paint if you're interested in graphic portraiture. Do you work from life? Um, I, I do occasionally work from life, and I was trained to work from life. Uh, mostly these days I use photographs, and I find that quite a useful mechanism in a few ways. The first uh, being it's just simply much easier in terms of uh, accessing people. You know, I mean, there, there aren't many people who have time in their lives to sit you know, for months upon end. Um, you're very lucky if you, if you can find a model uh, who will do that for you. Um, but also I find it a really useful distancing mechanism in that you're already working with a 2D uh, image and my work's becoming increasingly graphic and so I find that it's easier almost to rely less on the person in front of you and more on what's happening in the image and kind of to, to be a bit more free with that. It gives you a distance to be able to create and invent and have a bit more control over the image. I remember um, there's a brilliant quote from Francis Bacon who at one point said, because he works a lot from photographs, and he said um, that he couldn't ever do the, I, I don't remember the exact word, but um, he couldn't ever do the violence towards a sitter that he does with them in the room, you know, so this is why he works in, from photographs. Okay, so this is a, a painting of a friend of mine, Emma, um, who's a, a cabinet maker and a woodworker, and occasionally makes frames for me. And this was, so it was from a photograph that was taken in her flat, and so the, there's lots of, um, uh, paraphernalia around. There was actually in the picture a television um, behind her which I did put in at one point and ended up taking out. You can still see where it's where it's been actually in the painting. So I do work in layers and I edit things as I go along, remove everything happens on the canvas. Um, you were talking about them being quite graphic and you do have a sort of tendency to put the black outlines around the figures. Is that something, I mean, is that calculated? Uh, it, it is, in a, in a way, I find my work's becoming less naturalistic and more graphic. I really have an affinity towards graphic work um, and illustration, and I spent a bit of time in Japan, so I, I, I love that kind of the contrast and bold outlines and sort of German expressionist painting and, and things like that. Um, in, in this painting particularly, I found that because there's so much happening in the picture, in the image, um, it's, it's, it sort of works much better, I thought, to, to have that graphic element where, where things are suggested flattened almost, um, rather than going into kind of forensic, naturalistic detail. Um, what sort of paint do you use? Is it oil? Yes, this, this is mostly oil. I did do, um, so I stretch all of my canvases myself and prime them with acrylic generally. And then I did, I think, a charcoal sketch. And purely because of the size of this work, I, I, I mean, it takes a lot of paint to cover that kind of surface area. And also, uh, to, to make it easier to, to position things, I used an acrylic kind of base coat, really, an underpainting, um, to get the figures in the right spot, to get the table in, 
and the background and things. And then uh, that's all painted over with, with oil. This is a really large work. This is larger than your usual work, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little about, about it and who the people are, how it came about? Sure. Well, it's uh, 250 centimetres by 190, um, and it's, it's massive. I basically, last year, spent a stint house-sitting at a friend's place, and it was quite a large house, and I didn't have this planned at all, but I walked in and I thought, gosh, there's so much space, I have to use this in some way, and I have to um, do, do something quite ambitious. This was directly after uh, getting the Bulldog Bursary from the Royal Society of Portrait Painters. And so I, I felt like that also gave me um, licence to be more ambitious with the scale I was working on and the scope. And uh, I, I, you know, I was staying in this friend's house, and I went in and I bought these materials and stretched this canvas, and I didn't really have any idea of what I was going to do exactly. But then I, she, she had also said she was away in Africa somewhere, and she said, why don't you have a party while I'm away? And I thought, fabulous opportunity. That sounds like a good idea. And I did, and in the back of my mind, um, I sort of thought, I should, this is a, visually, this is great. And, and there were such kind of luxurious fabrics and decorative elements in the house that I thought this would be amazing to incorporate into a portrait. Um, and I had the idea of doing a, a, a dinner party like this with sort of a load of women around, around the table um, with these elements. And, and that's, I sort of sketched it in and I had no idea how it was going to work, um, but it, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. And you, um, they're all women, as you say, and you've mentioned also that your work has a sort of queer element to it. That's right, yes, yes. I tend to paint uh, people who, are, who I know well, intimately, who are in my life, or who are doing something creatively that I admire in some way, and they tend to mostly be queer women and men um, who I spend time with. So. And that's Radcliffe Hall in the background there, right? That's right. So it, uh, she, the, the picture I, it wasn't actually hanging there, so this is a, a slight invention of mine. Um, they had a family portrait up there, and I thought that might be a bit specific and potentially out of context. Uh, and so I decided I wanted some kind of androgynous figure uh, who was well known and I, I do, I've always loved that photo of Redcliffe Hall, I think it's fabulous. And it works with your graphic style. Exactly, think, yeah. exactly, yeah.